Hey YouTube, my name is Rob. I'm a data scientist and I make videos about machine learning and how to get started in data science. If you've worked in data science before or you're getting into data science, you've probably already heard about the website Kaggle. So Kaggle is an online community of data scientists. It's a place where you can go to find code examples, also host data sets, and there are a bunch of forums where you can talk about different machine learning topics. But Kaggle started out and still is a competitive platform where people compete in competitions to predict things. And I know that for someone new to Kaggle, it can seem very overwhelming to get involved in your first competition, but I think it's a great way to learn. So in this video, I'm just gonna take you through some basic ideas of tips that I would give to someone looking for their first Kaggle competition. And hopefully by the end of it, you'll feel comfortable enough to jump into one yourself. All right, let's get started. So of course, the very first thing you're gonna to need to do to join a Kaggle competition is make an account. And if you don't already have an account and you go to a Kaggle website, it'll look something like this. Um, and all you'll have to do is click on register, make an account, link it with your email or your Google account, and then you'll be in. Let's assume you have a Kaggle account. You'll have a homepage sort of like this. And if you look here on the left side, there's a bunch of different things you can choose from competition, data sets, code, discussions, and courses, we're gonna look at competitions since that's what this video is about. And there are a lot of things here. So if you're not already signed up for a competition, they won't necessarily show up as active, but we're gonna click on all competitions anyway to see just everything that's out there. Now, a few tips for picking the competition you wanna be involved in. A few things I would keep in mind. First, you don't wanna join a competition that's ending soon or has already ended. The real benefit of joining a Kaggle competition is the fact that you get to work in a community, ask questions, look at notebooks as they come out when people uh, make them public, and you really don't get that sort of benefit if you join a competition that's already completed. So after we click all competitions, we're gonna actually filter by recently launched, or we could, go by closing soon, but let's go by recently launched. And under each competition here, let's close this left side, you can see that there um, is a type of competition, a number of teams that are involved in it, and how long there is to go. So right now there are a few competitions with uh, days to go, months to go, uh, but we would, wouldn't really wanna join one that's just ending in a few days because uh, usually Kaggle competitions are a month to three or four months long, and you want to really get the whole benefit by joining early. So let's pick as an example this three months ago one. Now, another thing I want to mention before we get too far is there are also things called community competitions that just were launched this year. And with community competitions, they're not necessarily going to show up on this page, um, but I'll show you one as a as an example, these are just put on by anyone who wants to launch one. And I've actually launched my own Kaggle competition, the Pog vid YouTube video series. We're trying to predict video likes on YouTube videos, given some data there. And you can find the link in the description to this video. But what we're gonna go through here is one of the examples of an active competition. So let's go back to this market prediction competition and I'll take you through some of the steps I would take, almost like a chess checklist of items I would wanna go through before I joined a competition. Now, one thing uh, you definitely will wanna do is read everything on this overview tab. The overview tab usually has a description here that talks a little bit about the competition, where the data is, comes from, what you're trying to predict, and how it would be a benefit to have a predictive model that can predict whatever the target is. So you definitely wanna read the full description, get a good idea of what's going on first. At that point, you might decide, this competition isn't for me, maybe I wanna work with images, or I wanna work with text, or I wanna predict stuff like the stock market, then you would, choose to move on to a different competition. But if it looked like something that you're interested in, then you're gonna to wanna to keep on going through the overview. And I can't stress enough, reading and rereading the evaluation page is very important. 
So every competition, you're trying to optimize your predictive model to some sort of target. And the way that you're being judged on that is shown in the evaluation tab. If you're not optimizing your model for this evaluation metric, then you're doing the wrong thing. So this competition is using the mean of the Pearson co correlation coefficient, which is pretty standard, but you might have a competition that has a more uh, complicated way of calculating their evaluation. And you want to make sure you understand that fully before you move forward and try to create your model. Another thing to keep in mind is there's a timeline for every competition. So usually in most competitions, it'll launch. There'll be a period where anyone can join and they can submit predictions. And then usually about a week before the competition is set to end that they close things off. So you can't join teams with anyone else anymore. And um, in the final week, they actually try to make it so you don't publish any public information about any notebooks on the website about that competition and you kind of hunker down for that last week on the back bottom here oh and then at that when the competition ends for many competitions right then they'll release the the final scores and the rankings and uh, a few days after that they'll check to make sure remove anyone who has been identified as cheating and remove them from the website, uh, from the leaderboard, and it'll be finalized. But you'll see down here on this competition, there's a little timeline, tells you how long ago the competition started, how long we have until this rules acceptance and uh, team merging deadline, and then the close of the competition. Now this one's a little bit unique because they're actually using the predictive models on future data. So even after this mo this competition ends, there'll be a f an additional time window where they're gonna be scoring all the models on future data. So this is, this is interesting, but not always uh, typically competitions go this way. Then the prize page, which is nice to know what the prizes are, but that shouldn't be your main goal if you're starting a competition for your first time. Um, and then understanding that there are different types of Kaggle competitions for predicting. The most common ones nowadays are code competitions. And what that means is in a code competition, you actually have to submit your predictive model in a notebook. And that notebook will run on the test set that is hidden from your model. And you don't actually get a CSV or the data files for the test set that you create predictions for, but your code will create the predictions for it when it runs in submission. Another type of Kaggle competition you'll see is where they actually provide you all the feature data for the test set and you create your predictions as just a flat file that you can upload or push to the website. But code competitions are much more common these days for new, new ones that have launched. Um, looks like they also have some contact information. All right, so once you understand everything on this page, you can move over to looking at the data. Uh, way cop competitions run is there's always a public uh, training set. For most competitions, there's a training data set. And what this contains is a bunch of features about your data. This could be images, it could be a CSV file, it could be audio files, but they're giving you the training data and they'll also provide you the target value that your model wants to predict. So let's say it's a bunch of images and they're asking you to predict what the images is of. The training data set will have both the feature data and the targets provided. The test data, you don't know the target for, so your model it needs to predict for that. In this file data description tab, they will go over all the files provided. The train in this one, there's a train CSV file that they provide uh, with some unique identifiers like the row ID, the investment ID, and then these are a bunch of anonymized features that'll be provided in the data set. Uh, you can also see that uh, they they'll go into some detail about how the data was collected. Understanding this very thoroughly is going to be important for you to perform well in the competition. You can also go down, scroll down here to the very bottom of the page and actually see 
the data set by clicking on the CSV files. This can be kind of helpful if you just want to see quickly what the distribution of certain features are before you join it. You can also see the size of the data set itself. This one is about 18 and a half gigabytes. Okay, so I'd actually suggest skipping the code tab at first and next checking out the discussion section. So usually in the discussion, there are some pin discussions at the very top. Uh, a competition question and answer, or usually the competition host will post a message just saying, hi, welcome. Let us know if you have any questions. This is a great thread to always read thoroughly because especially right after the competition launches, there'll be a lot of questions or uncertainties about certain things in the data or what's going on. And this thread will usually have a lot of your questions already asked, or you can post your questions in here and get a response from the competition host. So always check out these Q and A's before posting any new discussion threads yourself, because the question could already be answered there. There is also usually a looking for a team thread where if you want to team up with other Kagglers to compete in this competition, you can do it here. You don't want to, now here's a very important thing. You don't want to discuss details about the competition with anyone outside of this discussion forum or the code forum, unless you are on a team with that person. It's against the rules to most competitions to discuss privately, and you don't want to get kicked out of the competition. So if you do have a question, post it on the forums. People are usually really friendly and helpful with answering questions. I would also recommend once you accept the terms of the competition to follow it. What that does is it'll email you anytime there's a new thread and then you can follow threads and you'll get emailed every time there's a new discussion topic. You'd be surprised how many times really important tricks to doing well on the competition will be actually discussed in the forums. And if you just read the forums thoroughly, you pick up on some things that might not be um, obvious otherwise. Now let's look at the code tab. So the code tab will provide a bunch of notebooks that competitors in this competition have made. You can sort these by most votes, most comments. Oh look, my notebook is one of the top ones for this competition. Uh, but you will see that there are a lot of EDA, which is exploratory data analysis of the data. You'll probably want to do that yourself but it's always good to sort of look through and see some examples that work. Now, you can also sort by best score. This is the best scores on the public test data set, not necessarily the best scores that will be revealed on the private, but it's, it is helpful sometimes to go here, sort by best score, and just to see what type of code um, is being used to submit to the leaderboard and get a somewhat decent score. I would recommend going through and reading and trying to understand what's going on. This person has made a deep neural network that they've trained on this data. And then you also will get a better idea of some nuances about how to submit to that specific competition. As I mentioned before, there are code competitions and then there are competitions where you can just submit the prediction test file. And if it's a code competition, this will provide you all the steps needed in your code to submit successfully. It can be one of the frustrating parts when you submit to a competition and you do something wrong and the code runs for hours but then fails. So at least knowing that you can write the code to run end to end and submit and get on the leaderboard. These can be very, very helpful. Now let's talk about the leaderboard. So as I mentioned before, the, to, the competition as it's going on for the however many weeks, months it's going on for, there will be a public leaderboard. This is updating live and showing who is submitted to the leaderboard and how they place on the public test set. Now it's important to understand the public leaderboard is not the final rankings that determines the winner of the competition. It's just a guide to show you how well people are doing on the public test set. 
Once the competition ends, this private leaderboard tab will populate and show you all of the private leaderboard ranks. Now in this competition, it's a little different because it'll be rerun in the future, but on most other competitions, as soon as the deadline, the, these three months to go end, the test private leaderboard will be revealed and you'll see who the winners are. And part of the nuance of doing well on a Kaggle competition is learning how to create a predictive model that is general enough that it can predict well both on the public leaderboard and on the private test leaderboard. So you can also see one thing I'll note about this is when you scroll through the leaderboard, if someone used a notebook to submit to the leader, public leaderboard, you can see that linked here on the leaderboard itself. So we click on this and we can see this may have been the notebook we were looking at before. So just another thing to keep in mind. Now I did mention the rules. You'll probably want to read all these rules through thoroughly. Um, but the main ones are that you can't share about the data or you can't share your approaches or your solution with other people outside of the discussion forms, unless you've joined a team. And there usually are some rules about what you can and can't do with the data set or publish about the data set. And that leaves us with this teams tab. So the teams tab will let you invite other people to join your team. You can do that here by requesting to merge. You can also rename your team name. Some people like to make funny team names. So it looks fun on the leaderboard. And, um, and yeah, that's that. You can also see if you have any pending merge requests or, or requests to merge with other people. On your submission tabs, you'll see all the times you've submitted and the public leaderboard score. After the competition is over, you'll see the private leaderboard score. And on the submit, submit uh, predictions, this button, if it was a competition where you could just upload a file of your predictions, you'd be able to do it here. Otherwise, you can select the notebook of code that you're gonna to use to submit to the leaderboard. Um, so let's just wrap up by going here to this competition that I'm hosting. It's predicting a, a YouTube video likes and what we're given is a bunch of data about the YouTube videos the different information like how long the video is, the description, the category of the video, the title, and even we're providing in this competition the thumbnails for every YouTube video. And you can see in the leaderboard here, people are doing a pretty good job of detecting the like, this is the target of this is actually the like to view ratio that they're trying to predict. And this is a competition you could join right now. So I have another video where I go through a code notebook where I discuss my approaches to a baseline model that you can watch. And uh, I hope you decide to join this. We'll have a series of these competitions where people can join in the future as well. Thanks so much for sticking around this long. I hope that you learned something new about how to join a Kaggle competition and you decide to join one. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video.